Hello everybody, Manix here. Got another tabletop knife review for you right here, right now. Feel free to subscribe at that little bell notification if you do not want to miss any weekly knife, gear, flashlight, lighter, EDC, whatever you want to call them, videos. Support me on Patreon, link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get right into the review. This is on a really, really awesome knife, the Cold Steel Talwar. Or Talwar? Talwar? How do you say that? Talwar. I'm going to say Talwar. Recently, I did a video on the previous version of this knife of the same size, the Talwar XL. Same knife, but with the AUS 8A blade steel instead of the S35VN blade steel. We got on this sucker right here. He has a vast, vast improvement overall, I think. In the video, I said it was the exact same thing other than the blade steel, but I was slightly off there. The traction on this G10 is not quite as aggressive as the old version, and then the pocket clip is not blackened. It is stonewash. Yeah, it looks like a stone wash to me. Everything else, as far as I can see, are the same thing, though. But regardless, this is, as I'm filming this right now, early 2023, the latest model of the Talwar. So if you pick this up new somewhere, most likely it's going to be this model, the current version of the Talwar. Again, with the S35VN blade steel on there. Let's get the specs out of the way. Blade length, whopping 5.5 inches. Handle length, 7.375 inches. Making the overall length, 12.875 inches. Weighs 8.6 ounces. S35VN blade steel, satin finish, as you can see. Retails at $289.99. Youch. Youch. That is a lot. But you can get this in the aftermarket, any old knife store, for around $155, $160. Triad lock, that was kind of a bitch to disengage right there. I'll talk about that in just a minute. But extremely strong, as you may or may not know. One of the strongest locking mechanisms in the world. Trumped by their new Atlas lock, also by Cold Steel, also designed by Andrew Demko. Yes, I'm looking forward to trying that one out soon. New locking mechanism they made that's actually stronger than the Triad lock. Who the hell would have thought? This is already one of the strongest locks in the world. And now we have a stronger one, so awesome. Can't wait to try that out. But... This is still way strong enough. It's too strong, actually. Much, much stronger than the typical lockback. We have an integral stop pin right there. Long story short, it's a hell of a strong locking mechanism. Thumb plate. It is waveable off of the pocket. You can deploy it very quickly that way, too. G10 handle scales. No liners whatsoever. Pure G10. Aluminum backspacer right here. Tip up carry only, they give you a second pocket clip in the box, so you can pop this guy off, use those screws to put on the left side if you are lefty, so it is 100% ambidextrous, it actually deploys very quickly, you do need a little wrist flick, just like all of these giant cold steels, all these giant lockback style knives, you gotta give it just, just a little thwack, but for the amount of blade you are getting, that is completely adequate, that is totally fine, I do like how simple it is, it's literally just two slabs of G10, we have our lockback design right here, the pocket clip, a backspacer, so it's completely closed. It is not a flow-through knife, so you do want to probably blow in that every now and again, get some compressed air if it gets really dirty on you, but huge, huge knife again, five and a half inch blade, just over a foot long, almost 13 inches overall length right here. A lot of different grips you can grip this into. The first one I'm going to call is the, the precision grip. You can grip all the way up here, use that little half choil they have that's comprised of the front side of the guard as well as the ricasso of the knife. You want some control, then you can scooch down here to what I would call the standard grip. Right there. Use a little thumb ramp. You can go into a mid-tier grip down here. Just watching where my fingers are. Still using this jimping up here, which I'll also talk about soon. And then you can go all the way down here. This is like our combat grip. You get a lot of reach out of this one. It's still very, very strong. I, I feel like it's not going to get knocked out of my hand very easily. We have a little guard right down here. And the last grip I would go down to is all the way down here with your pinky just getting the sort of guard or the butt of the handle right there. Uh, this is like the maximum reach grip. I would not personally use this. It feels not the most secure, but if you want that extra, you know, it's 0.75 inches of length, be my guest. But again, I would probably stick down here if you want maximum reach. Not going to disengage that accidentally as long as you're not doing this with your thumb for some reason. Thumb naturally lands right here again on the jimping. So in most of these grips, you're actually utilizing that jimping. And although it's not very coarse, it's actually relatively functional, unlike a lot of Cold Steel's jimping. So this one actually works pretty well. It's not that sharp or anything, but I do like these deep cutouts right here. It actually works okay. You can lock in your thumb just good enough. Uh, so we have good traction, medium traction, G10, decent jimping up here. 
a lot of choils, very intricate, kind of complicated design we have with the choils, but it's completely functional. Again, one, two, three, four, possibly five total grips. This knife can be held in. That's something that sets it apart from most of the other cold steels. Most of the other cold steels will give you maybe two grips that are designed to be in. This guy's a lot more versatile. Very simple, very versatile knife. Straight back style blade right here. Previous video, I said it was a drop point. It is not. It is a straight back, technically. A little bit different right there. Love the design right here. Love this little swedge they got on here as well. Very cool. Very simple. Again, very, very, very simple. It's going to be very good for shearing, slicing, slashing, hacking, chopping. Good piercing. It's a very good blade overall. Good for most tasks. I like the belly on there. It's very beautiful. I like the sort of S curve we have going on with the design. 8.6 ounces. So for the amount of blade you're getting, that's totally adequate. Again, I don't see how they could have lightened it up anymore. It's just G10. There's no liners in there. It would be very difficult to make it any more light. It's pretty much as light as you can get such a massive, massive ass blade. Carries very well, and not a whole lot is going to be poking out of your pocket right there, despite being such a big knife. Some people may be able to see that it is a knife with a shiny pot clip. I don't know why they went from the blackened clip to the shiny one, but whatever. Little lanyard hole there, by the way. But there's not a whole lot poking out there. It's not loop over, but for such a big knife, I wouldn't want a loop over. I don't think I want just a little bit of something extra to grip onto. Very easy to wave this off of your pocket. You're going to be about in this grip if you pull it out or if you wave it. Again, the fifth, the last tier grip, I would call that. Uh, so you might want to scooch up just a little bit, but it might just be secure enough. Again, you can throw a lanyard on there if you want. The locking mechanism. Now, triad lock needs no introduction, but if you thwack this at just the right angle, let's fail, there we go, it can kind of seize up on you. It hasn't done it yet. It did once in the beginning of the video, but... Of course, it's not doing it now, but sometimes if you thwack it real hard or you, you get it on just the right angle there, it tends to seize up. It'll get a little stiff and it'll be a little bit more difficult to disengage. Uh, that is when it is new, though. You do have to break the knife in. You're going to have to open and close it many, many times. Or just really break that in, oil your knife up, take care of it. Uh, but some people do complain about these locking mechanisms, these triad locks, really just being difficult to disengage. I beg to get to differ. I don't think it's that difficult, but you do need to depress relatively harder than most other locking mechanisms. And sometimes it does get stuck where you'd really, really got to clench down on there. Uh, but I think that's an okay price to pay. Totally adequate for the amount of strength and safety you are getting. It's extremely, extremely strong. So for such a big knife, that's totally reasonable, I think. Uh, but just keep that in mind. If you have a weaker thumb or just weaker hands, maybe you're younger, uh, you don't want to get in a situation where you thwack it open and can't close it. That would be bad. With some breaking in, with some elbow grease, it'll be just fine. I haven't had a cold steel get so stuck on me to the point you needed a tool or something to disengage it. That's just never happened on me before. Thumb plate. I prefer thumb studs, and I even more so prefer thumb holes. But you can wave this off of your pocket, and it is nice and jimped on the sides of there. So generally speaking, it's okay for deployment. It's just okay. Don't know what it is. I usually just prefer the thumb studs. But you know what? They work good enough. For such a big knife, it's okay. You can take that out if you want. Don't know why you would, but you certainly could. You have that option. So have a great design. It's very ergonomic. It's extremely versatile. It's extremely strong because of that locking mechanism. I love the sort of like spine-looking design we have right here. Very cool. Good traction overall, all around. Good pocket clip carries okay. I don't love these clips. I don't hate them. They're, they're fine. They're stubby. They're very covert. I do like how you can't really tell it's a massive knife or anything. It looks like... Pretty much anything's in your pocket right there. Most people would not think you have a knife with a five and a half inch blade on you just by looking at that pocket clip alone. So that's really cool. Blade steel. This is the S35VN, which is an extremely, extremely high quality blade steel. It's a very, very, very high quality, extremely good edge retention capability. Why they put it on these extra large size folders. And it, you know, for me, it's kind of contradictory. Personally, I would prefer a softer steel because big folders to me always means harder work. Harder work means potential for the edge of the blade to chip or break the more brittle it gets. An S35VN is on the more brittle side. It'll break or chip a lot easier than AUS-10A, which they put on a lot of their other knives. Uh, and it is considerably, considerably more expensive. But you have way, way better edge retention with the S35VN. You don't have to resharpen it as much. Some people prefer the AUS-10. Some like the S35VN, particularly the steel snobs. They're going to want the higher quality, more expensive blade steel. And don't get me wrong, it is cool. It makes the knife more valuable. 
makes it cooler, I think. But functionally, you know, smaller knives, I think, would do better with the higher quality steels that have better edge retention or more brittle. The bigger knives, I would like to see with slightly softer steels, but to each their own. I think the people have spoken for a long time. A lot of people were complaining about cold steel, just throwing the AUS 8A on all of their knives. Some people wanted to see some higher quality stuff, so that's what they did. Closest knife cold steel sells to the Talwar is going to be, I'm going to have to say, the Espada large size. Very similar in a lot of ways. The blade shapes are similar, not quite the same, but close. Stone wash finish on here, satin on here. They both have G10 handle scales, although the feel of them, the texture is a little different. They carry pretty much identically. Pocket clips are almost exactly the same, other than the finish on them. Same locking mechanisms, although they are oriented a little differently. They're both going to deploy pretty much identically. Their thickness is almost identical. I'll do a comparison video one of these days, but they're almost the exact same knife. Although they look a little bit different. Their choils, you know, the placement of everything is a little different. The blade style is a little bit different. We do have an AUS 10A blade still on here and an S35 VN on there. That's going to be the biggest difference right there. These guys are maybe 130 bucks or so. These are closer to 160 So you're going to spend a little bit more on this, but you're mostly just spending on that blade steel right there. That's where the money's going. So you want a better quality knife and you kind of like both of the knives. You just want something with a better blade steel, more edge retention, go with the Talwar. But if you want to save some money or if you don't really care about the blade steel that much, I would just go with the Espada. They're very, very similar knives. Again, I'll do a head-to-head -head comparison soon. As far as their extra large size folders go, this one pretty much wins in versatility. Versatility is where this guy wins. And again, it's very light for the size. Deploys very fast, very strong lockup, good side traction. Very versatile, hold it in so many different positions. Reverse grip, you can carry it just like that. Carries very well. It's ambidextrous, great blade steel. It's, it, it really kicks ass. It's a home run. It's a great knife, not just to collect, but also to carry as a defensive option. Very, very simple knife, just A-plus home run cold steel Tawar.